So I'm going to pick a random coin today. Let's just go QLC, QLC BTC. So last time we're going to delete this chart. Last time we talked about the risk to reward uh, and, and basically the patience versus waiting, waiting too long on one side of a move not being patient enough on the other side. So, so kind of the max tolerance risk you're willing to take versus getting into the trade, right? And if, if you kind of wait too long past that sweet spot, um, obviously you're buying too high. And if you're too impatient, you're still buying too high, right? So, so that kind of becomes this sweet spot. We'll just kind of recap that a little bit here. And uh, I would just simply in this escape of things, draw the... Uh, backside trend and uh, obviously backside trend if you would have bought backside trend it, this is just a quick example of what would have looked like a good buy i guess we have to go a little further too so so you would have something more like this backside trend like this right here and you have a couple of these purchases throughout and then the same thing here this would uh, simply adapt to here from there to there Right, something like that, and that's fine. And then it would adapt from here to here. And that point, obviously, that's uh, not happening. So you you end up getting this backside trend from back here, right? Where you you have trend, and it's uh, it's giving you the right buy spots, but you're still failing down, right? So you have that. You have this topside trend. Trend has to break on the top side before then the move can actually happen. So it adapts onto here and into here, and it's still still trying to break. This local trend that's created kind of this distribution trend qlc is, is trying to create so you know it always kind of becomes this test of did you buy here and then see failure did you buy here and see failure etc 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 so just as a quick recap on on last time last lesson we went through that 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 spot between risk on this side right the amount of risk you're willing to take versus this side which is waiting too long so th this is just kind of going to go off of uh, what we talked about in the last lesson which is risk and waiting too long to get to a trade how do we start to identify what becomes the right spot in a trade right always start by identifying kind of the uh, overall health of a trade so in in the in the form of technicals we now have to venture back into the realm of technicals and, and trying to find this spot where waiting too long versus risk uh, is going to be the, the, the correct entry, right? And so if we were to simply go back in time here, and uh, we're going to do this on a live trade, we're going to look at one that's already unfolded, and then we're going to do one on a live trade, right? So, so you would have had this, this falling trend, right? And you would have had falling trend here and so forth and so forth. Well, how do you identify what becomes the proper spot to buy? Well, that's where technicals come in, right? You have to start with these kind of higher time frames, and you know you have one hold level here, and uh, we're going to start by identifying this as a hold level on the daily. We're going to move this out further. You have one here, right? You have one here, uh, and and then you kind of have the entirety of this leg. So you you do have the entirety of this leg as well. So this kind of becomes a what what are you looking to hold in this lake? And and kind of as a rule of thumb, there is a couple questions that people ask. Like, what hold are you trying to hold? Are you trying to hold this back here, right? This this higher point back here? Are you trying to hold something like this, which you can see was attacked here? Move comes up, comes back, holds this, moves up again. Are you trying to hit something back here? Are you trying to hit something back here? Right. This becomes a test of of greed uh, and how strong the move is. You, you have two sides to this move, right? You have inside the current leg right now, right? Which is this. And you also have uh, the larger piece, which could even potentially be all the way from back in this region back here. So something like this, right? So you, you have kind of these two regions of, of what the leg hold looks like. Like what, what part of this move um, are you looking to hold back on, right? Like where, where are you actually looking to hit a hold level on, on this move? So if we actually come and zoom in on this move and uh, try to square that back up again. Remember, this is a daily chart. So regardless if it's a daily chart or whatever it is, a uh, 15 minute chart, it, it doesn't matter. We'll go through some smaller time frames too, right? 
if, if you're holding levels back here, this is going to be uh, indicative of an extremely strong part of the move. I would never be buying these hold levels. These are not a big enough retracement on this side. The risk is too high. The leverage that you're putting into the trade is beyond, beyond risky. So we're going to delete these and just start on this move by going to the beginning of this right here. So you have something that has moved up and you've identified a couple different hold levels. So the first one you're going to identify is there, the next one is here. So, so what really becomes the level that you are uh, wanting to buy? You start in this move by saying, how much did it make, right? Like you're, you're up 126% that this is going to go through a large retracement, right? 126%, we already know because we've seen the chart in advance, but regardless, 127%. You have to make the decision here. As, as to what you are willing to accept as the terms, right? This accumulation zone that has happened down here for the past two weeks is, is most likely not all of a sudden going to uh, distribute right here, come here, and then move straight up. This is not enough of an accumulation time frame, right? So you have to make a decision between how strong an entry can be. So this becomes the point where you look at this chart and say, okay, where's the strongest entry? Where's capital injection going to uh, go into this trade? Just like there's a capital injection on this hold level back here, right? You can see it right here, whichever, whichever one you're using and any one of these three, it doesn't matter. Whichever one of these three you're using, you can see the capital injection point here. So, so you can see a span of about three weeks here from, from the end of January to almost the end of February, actually the end of February. So there's a month long of accumulation here. So you can, you can start to gauge what an accumulation zone looks like and where your money is best entered on this trade. Once this move has happened to this extent, and once you've back attacked some of these larger levels, you have to start thinking of indexing the strength of these moves in your mind. So what I mean by indexing is, is giving them kind of a ranking score to, to start to wrap your head around leverage and, and how leverage works in a trade. If something has moved up 27%, I, you can automatic, automatically ascertain 127% is an insanely big move. I can just instantly index as, as a, the move has... Um, kind of been 10 out of 10 for expectations. It held this uh, accumulation level right here for uh, a month long. We can, we can already index this as a 10, as this was like kind of the greatest expectation. What, whatever was hit back here, I'm not sure the level that was hit. I guess we could just go look. It would be uh, quite possibly this inverse level right here. Oh, right here. So it, it hit this inverse level fine. So it didn't close its value out. It hit the inverse level. No big deal, right? So it's a very normal behavior, but again, it, it did gain 100%. So you, you can start automatically by indexing this as something that has uh, about a 10 in strength. With that said, you have to start indexing in your mind the amount of strength associated with these to kind of put more, more weight to what a hold level could look like. Just like what had happened here in this cycle. In this cycle here, you probably have a very similar result where you had a move that was uh, quite substantial, 88%. Again, you could just automatically index that as a, as a 10 out of 10. The, the move was very strong. There was a ton of profit in it. Therefore, the profit has been uh, absorbed in the move and people will move on to other trades. This needs to come and pull back down so that if it were to attack a higher level up here, so, so now if the next level it needs to attack is the valley, it, it needs to respectively pull back because it has to close this valley here. So it, it has to respectively pull back to make it worth even being in the trade for anybody. So if it's going to come back and attack this valley, it's likely to not do it off of this. This 50%, it's likely to not do it off of that because there's a lot of failure that could still happen uh, pursuant to that. It's more likely that it comes down to one of these lower levels, holds the long-term ladder up, and then goes and attacks that level for another 100% move. As to what is normal in stocks, something goes through the accumulation level and it holds this kind of long-term level. So we have to have a way to index where we want to buy in our minds, where, where, where our next target could possibly be. Uh, this is should actually be right there at the wick, where our next target could possibly be. And, and how far do we have to come down to, to start hitting that level? So, so we can automatically start to uh, build out kind of this repertoire of, of what our expectations can be. And we can say, okay, it can, it can hit this whole level here. We'll, we'll mark this one right here and it can hit that whole level there. And there may be another little one in there that it can hit. And then so it can start back attacking this level back here. And then uh, it, can, it can back attack this one right here, which is also another possibility. And then kind of the front side of the leg, which would be 
the uh, the best case scenario that it could that it could come back and try to hold. So, so we kind of have to create all these hold levels and start thinking about what is the most likely scenario as this thing comes down. Right now, before we even move in the trade, this is what our this is what we should be seeing. Technically, these are the levels that we should be seeing. Mentally, we have to choose which one we are going to buy. How do we do that? We we use the technicals to help guide us. We're going to walk through this one by one candle. So here, the first candle, we have our swing, which is going to define our trend. We can on a day on a daily basis, we can just snap this to the day to day trend. And if we were on a fifteen minute trend, you would you would see a lot of fifteen minute action in here, right? But as the days go on, you have to kind of see where exactly your first trend is going to be created. You're not you're not going to have this. Um, and so so fine, you you have the local attempt to hold this level and this is this is extremely local this would be a pretty crazy uptrend if this was going to hold this level and and move up right so that's fine you you define your first point of a spot where you're going to move forward right so you, you've defined kind of these points of where you could take re-entry and even immediately in in the current action of the moment this would be more like a scalp trade where you would enter this trade here this is not a long-term position trade because the the the, the Distribution hasn't matured enough. You have to let this distribution mature and it has to hold a level through whatever trend it creates to move up. So you're going to have kind of these knee-jerk reactions where it does come down and, and it creates trend based on some other inverse level. So, so on this side of the candle up here, there's most likely an inverse level hit. 99% of the time, there's an inverse level hit inside of here, which is showing you where your distribution trend is going to start, right? So th this is all stuff we know based on the technical. So that's what we're walking through right now. So, so this was hit fine. It's, it's going to, you know, first touch bounce. That's fine. If you want to identify this as a scalp trade, it does veer on the higher side of risk. If you're scalp trading something based distribution in the moment, realize that you're buying into a failing move. So you have to be very careful with this move. If this is what you've identified as a level that you want to buy, you need to identify this as something very specific. Okay. This is going to be swing trade. In, uh, you know what, we'll do this with text because it'll be a, a bit cleaner here. This is going to be a swing trade. We'll, we're, we're just going to use acronym. Swing trade inside distribution. Swing trade. WS for swing trade because S could be scalp or swing. So you know what, we'll just, that's fine. Okay, we're going to do the full forwards. <laughs> swing trade uh, inside distribution. So this is going to be a swing trade inside distribution. So, so we have to have realistic expectations. So this is a very fragile move. This is a very quick move that's going to happen. So, so if you were to identify this level, you'd need to understand that this is failing into or, or coming off of the end of a move. Failing down, does that mean we, we can't take the trade? No, it means we can still take the trade, but understand how fragile this is. If this had a, uh, a, a gauge of, of how fragile it is, we would say something like this. How fragile is it? A uh, fragile factor would be equal to probably about an 8 or a 9 or a 10. It's, 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 a, it's a highly fragile move, meaning that you have to keep your eyes on it. You have basically one entry, one exit. You pick your inverse level that lies somewhere in, 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 in this spectrum right here of, of this move. There's going to be an, a, a distribution level here. And there's, there's a nice profitable trade in here, right? There's a nice profitable trade, 19% um, or whatever this was, 24% or even 10%. There's a good trade here, but that doesn't mean you should always take it because these are highly fragile moves and they act quick. Typically, what happens in the industry is the more fragile the move is, the faster it will move in, in all stocks. The more fragile it is or the stronger it is, the faster it will move. So when a, when a trade is very fragile like this, uh, understand that you have to identify this level. And if you're not identifying this in the moment and, and buying on it and selling almost instantly for a small profit, then you, you know, you're, you're increasing your risk as the higher the... As, as the higher the fragile factor goes, the more risk you are taking. So if you identified this first part of the move, you'd be identifying this as something that is a, I, I put swing trade in here. That's actually incorrect. It's supposed to be scalp. That's my mistake. A scalp trade in here, inside distribution, where you are buying a whole level to sell immediately in a very fragile move. Because as, as much as you can make 
in possibly an hour here for a crazy scalp trade, 20% for a scalp trade, you could also lose just equally as, as much. Or, or in, in our best case scenario, if we were to buy this level here and take this scalp trade as a, a high fragile factor, right? If we were taking this inside of distribution, we would enter here. And the second that this hits an inverse level, we are out. And that is it. The trade is cut. Game over. Do not stay in that trade. Do not look for it to bounce. Do not look to ride some kind of uptrend. The move is too fragile. So you can see there, it is, it is still failing down. And really right now, what we're trying to do is break trends. So now we are just trying to identify the next level that we would uh, buy it. So we can instantly go and give this side of this uh, some criteria. This very much would still be a, a scalp trade inside of distribution. Again, we, we don't need to identify every single one as what could it possibly be. Yes, there is a scalp trade inside of distribution. Yes, it has a fragile factor. This is very much going to be always kind of a scalp trade inside distribution with a, with a fragile factor. And you can, you can take it down maybe one level because it is uh, coming to be a bit lower. So, so how fragile is it? Yeah, well, it's a little less fragile because it's going to hold this level easier than it's going to hold this level because this level was determined from, from quite some time ago. But it is still fragile, though. It is still fragile until we break trend and back attack the valley, right? Really, what we need to do inside of this move in the current is back attack this. We need to back attack this valley right here to start uh, moving up in this move. And you know what we have to do now? Because we actually created a, another uh, valley based on this bounce, we actually have to back attack this valley too. So, so we still have to do the work to get back on the upside of this move into, in, into the move. So this is still a scalp trade. We are not looking to uh, enter this trade unless it's for a quick scalp, these hold levels, right? And, and there's a point where you see where it just falls straight down. And inside that day, it could quite possibly be that this did have a bounce. It could have hit this, came up, and this could have been a 30-minute trade where it failed, failed down off of something like this level here, its own inverse, and there could have possibly been kind of this uh, smaller trade in here. It's very quite possible that you, you hit this level, bounced up, simply just took a, a, a small, small little trade here. Like this is, this probably did happen and we can break this down after the replay. There's a 7% move in here and that is very possible that happened. But really that's all that the move is, right? In this distribution, we are still trying to understand where inside of this leg, oops, not that one, where inside of this leg, we are looking to take this risk, a, a better place to take this assumed risk, because this is kind of the situation that always happens, right? We see these move, we identify that they're in distribution, and it's like, okay, is this thing moving up or is it still moving down? As you're moving down through these levels, you are not getting into scalp trades anymore. What you are trying to do is break through trend. So now we are kind of defining a different part of this move. And, and, and you know, this, is, this starts to become a hold level right here. What, where those are scalp trades inside of distribution, these become holds trying to break trend, right? So holds trying to break trend, holds trying to break trend have a much less fragile factor. This is probably something like a five or maybe even a four and a half, we can call it four and a half. So this is how we're starting to categorize where we should be entering this trade. This is still quite high in my opinion. This one right here, this hold, this, this, this level we're touching right here, and I'll make this thicker right now so we understand that this is the one we're talking about. This is still a hold inside of the move that's trying to break trend. Really, we can't do anything until we break trend. So even if we were to enter on the first touch, it's still a scalp move until we actually break trend. Really, what we're trying to do is hold this level through trend. The risk that we're taking here when we got before into the idea of risk on this side versus waited too long on this side, this is not risky enough. We weren't greedy enough. There, there is no wait too long because this thing isn't going to just come and break straight up through this and, and, and go straight up. It's not going to. It's, if anything, it's going to come back up, test trend, fall back down, test trend again, fall down here and then break up to create its uptrend. And, and at that point is when you could have got your best entry. And maybe you could have got slightly better here because there was some backside trend we didn't see. Yeah, so right here, there's a backside trend, it touched trend, it broke the whole touch trend, and it still held the whole level because it closed over the daily. But maybe the best entry was on, on this trend. 
not not quite sure yet. Anyways, that would be the way to assess that, right? You have to look at these these trends and you have to understand that even even entering now is is still too early because in one case in scenario, we come up and let's redraw that trend here. So we have one point where we have trend right here, right? So so in one case in point, we have trend bounces and this becomes the best entry. We're not guaranteed this whole level is going to hold. So this might not be the correct buy. That Just because trend is here, just because we're touching a local trend, doesn't mean it's a correct buy. We could be testing a global trend, very easily testing a global trend out like this, right? And we're going to leave this here to see how this interacts. We could, again, we could very easily be testing a global trend. So this doesn't become touches trend buy. This becomes almost another scalp trade. Touching this trend is, is another uh, form of a scalp trade, right? So we, we go and we do this and then we say, what, what else is a scalp trade in here? This is a six right here. The, the risk factor is getting lower because we're touching stronger levels of support. And I wish I could turn this sideways, but maybe what I can do is turn the text green so we understand that it is uh, part of that. And, and this touch right here is a scalp trade inside of distribution. So it's getting less fragile as it goes. And then where does the hold factor come in? So on this side of trend right here, so, so in this first touch scenario, this is still a scalp trade off of trend, right? So this is, this is still a scalp trade off of trend. So we, we come down, we touch trend. This is still very much a scalp trade. You can buy trend and, and look for the bounce and see what level it inverses at and still take that nice 5%, 10%, 15%, or even that could be your justification to hold, right? You've bought in here. This can be your justification to see what's going to happen, but, but most likely you're just going to come back and touch trend. So all the profits, you're just forfeiting them as you... Let this trade mature more, right? Like this is a scale of, of profits versus maturity. The most profits are, are able to be taken across the length of maturity. So profits go down as maturity is reached from scalp positions. So in this case, your biggest return is the first touch to the instant part that it moves up. After that, as this trade matures, you're losing profits because what's going to happen is you're going to come up off that bounce and then test this and then test this. So if you had profits, oops, like this, maturity, and profits on this side, um, the scale works like this. Profits on this side, you will have the most profits the quicker you get out of the trade, and the more it matures will diminish your profits because the higher the profits are here and the lower profits will hold trend. As you allow that trend to mature, you will gain more profits by holding past this. But as a scalp trade, this makes sense too. Buy instantly off the first touch bounce, like what we're seeing here, first touch bounce, you'll take the most profits there, right? Just like you did on this one right here to right there, right? Just like you did possibly on, on this one to here, just like you did possibly on this to here. And it's impossible to see that without breaking this down, but you kind of have this uh, difference. And, and QKC is a good one that I would put to mind today as to where people are entering QKC at 300. It ran up to 324 sats. Uh, that would have been quick profits to take to leave the trade to re-enter down at 305 or 306 or 307 or wherever it is, right? And and the point being is that you would have had the most profits by entering faster, letting it fail down and re-getting in. So so you would have taken this trade here. So profits against maturity before it gets uh, to that point where it's back testing trend, and then you would have rebought here to take basically the same scalp move all over again. So basically, you're just buying the scalp twice over. But in this case, in point, you have a bit of a better chance to move up because that scalp there is maturing into higher profits against the larger trends, right? So it kind of becomes this scale where profits against swing are better when acted on at first, right? And you take that trade instantly, and then you take this side of that same, same scalp trade. And you can turn this into a swing or a position trade, but every trade should start as a scalp to see where it could possibly go, right? In my opinion, I'm a strong believer that every, every trade should start as a scalp for this exact reason. Because if you, if you enter any trade, you have to identify whether the profits are now or in the future. But if the profits are in the future, you can still take the, the, the immediate bounce point, let it mature, to hold its uptrend to get more profits, take the trade here and take the trade here, right? So this is something that with experience, you guys will see what it looks like to, and, and there'll be a whole lesson on this, but just to start opening people's minds to the idea of, of where these trades make sense, right? And, and you, can, you can see it because always first touch bounce and profits are instant. That doesn't mean there's not profits for holding. It doesn't mean you can't enter here and then all of a sudden you're up here in the future. 
but that is a position trade. There's multiple scalps inside that position trade and it's identifying if you buy here and sell here, you can, you can, if, if you truly believe it's going here to this point right here, there's a ton of scalps in between. So every time one of those scalps executes, you can actually just increase your position and give yourself chances to leave the trade before it fails. So I'm a strong believer that, that there's always scalps uh, prior. So this is kind of the scalp factor here on trend, right? And then you have to say, okay, well, if, if this is a six, right, we are diminishing our fragility factor in this. How fragile is this move? How likely is it to break down? How likely are we to, to, to make money? So this is how we have to start categorizing trades, right? We have to start looking at these scales as to how do we mentally ascertain where becomes a, a good point to uh, enter this trade. So then we have something like the trend where trend is equal to uh, a different type of risk, right? And, and, and the lower break levels that we are starting to hold, the better our chances are. And you'll see this move start to try and stabilize out. I'm assuming right now, now I don't know if it's going to stabilize now or dump straight down, but I'm assuming right now it'll, it will try to stabilize against the trend as you'll have more people entering as it's, as it's reducing its position size. And then you can say, well, there's still only 60% here in a best case 60% scenario. I'm still not comfortable entering here. But we can maybe enter when this actually comes and holds this for a while and breaks trend and comes back and, and back tests whatever little valley is in here and then has that pull back against trend. That would be a great spot to enter because then you're enter, you, you've confirmed the trend break. You have held the move on the hold level. And you have had a pullback to maybe this little hold level inside of here. So if we kind of delete this, there, you see this little, this little pip right here in the move might be a hold level that we hit and, and we actually get to ladder up. So that would be almost like a perfect entry on, on this move as to where you've been able to reduce the risk going into the trade because you're not taking these positions of failure, right? So then we're just going to see. And, and there it is. It just, that was it. The scalp trade executed. You got entry on trend. You, you took a small position against whatever inverse is in here and it still failed down, right? So then you're going to start looking at lower hold levels. And, and now you have this hold level down here. And this is possibly like a three. You have something like this, which is a three. And then something like uh, this out here, these two, both of these would be somewhere between like a, a two and a I, I would say something like a, a, a two. The risk here is relatively low. I would say probably, yeah, a two. And then uh, something like this one down here, this very last zone here, this, this one here would be a one, right? So your risk on this one, and we're going to change this one a different color just to have a little bit of a difference here. We'll change it to light blue color. Do the same thing with this here, light blue. And this is a risk factor of one. So now you've kind of categorized in your mind what a and, and this, is, this is kind of the process that, that you should always go through in your mind when you're looking at trades, this, how fragile is this move at this point? What am I buying into? And this will start to build a catalog inside your head about what the leveraging in a coin looks like. So this really becomes a scale of leverage and how to, how to identify leverage in a move. So when, when I use the term something is over leveraged or something is under leveraged, Buying here, up here in these high fragile spots, this is an over leveraged position, right? And then this blue trend here would also be a, like a, a 0.5 or also be, be a one as well. This uh, blue one right here, this, this global trend right here that we have, and let's change this a little brighter so we can see it. Maybe that's the color there we should be using, something like that. So then we have kind of these, uh, these ones right here are, are two. These are shared as a two and a two and a half possibly. And this is a one and this, this global trend is also a one. So you kind of move forward in this move now and uh, you take a look. And this becomes a, a test of how much risk are you willing to take in a move? That idea of risk on this side of the trade, how much risk are you willing to take, right? Are you willing to take no risk? Are you willing to take a little bit of risk? Uh, or cl close to no risk, I should say. Are you willing to take a little bit of risk right here? Are you willing to take this trend line, which is, or, or I should say this hold level as it holds, which actually turns into this hold level. So whatever hold level ends up holding throughout the move, are you willing to take that much risk? Are you willing to take a moderate amount of risk up here? Are you willing to take high risk, right? But then you also see the high risk trade leads to a 20% swing almost instantly, right? So, so the higher the risk, the better the payoff. But it's that point of having to micromanage the position to the minute because this is a 20% trade, 23%, and this probably happened relatively fast. This was probably like maybe two hours this happened over. Uh, you know, And then for the next how many days, one, two, three, four, five, six, we haven't even seen a move that's been greater than 10%, right? So there's 13% here after you waited for one, two, three, four, 
five days, bought the correct spot and sold the correct talk. And, and that was uh, close to half of what happened probably here in two hours. So again, the kind of the high, you, you have to start cate- categorizing and cataloging what these trades look like. So if the, fra- if the fragility factor is high, the, the, you're going to have movement in the coin, right? If, if it's high, you're going to have movement. Um, and that's where 20% is, is gained like that, almost in the, in, in the snap of a finger in the blink of an eye. You wake up, you know, enter your trade, hit the hold level, leave your computer for half an hour to go eat lunch, and all of a sudden you made 15%, or all of a sudden you lost 10%, right? It's, it's that high-risk, high-swing reward trade because that's what it is, right? And, and this becomes now, you know, how long did you wait? Did you wait too long to get into this trade, right? This, this side of this trend being like we were taught, we talked about last time, waiting too long, right? How long did you wait? And, and really with this all in mind, now you have to understand that this here is just the first part of distribution cycles, right? This is just the first cycle in distribution. So what's going to happen likely is you're going to try to break this trend, have a swing here. Your trend is going to go here. And then it's going to see if it can break this trend while still holding here, or if it's going to break down, or if it's going to break that next trend up, back attack that origin level again, and then move against that to have the larger move, right? So then even here, you, all you're doing is, is really dissecting the first cycle of distribution in this move, right? So this becomes how much risk are you willing to take, right? And you can see, so there it is right there. How much risk were you willing to take? Well, if you were willing to take less risk and be greedier, this becomes a side of risk, right? How, how much, um, how patient are you? How much, how much are you, are you willing to wait for a move? And, and this is where a lot of people, so this trend actually is broken right now. This is, uh, we're going to move this to here and this trend, because that trend completely breaks there, which, which fuels the downtrend probably, fuels the breaking of this move, right? 